Hi, this is William. Welcome to Fly Spoke. And um, I have in my vice a fly of my creation, and I, I call it the Fly Spoke Superbug. And um, I use it dry fly fishing for Atlantic salmon um, up on uh, Gas Bay. And since that time when I first created the fly, um, I've also taken it to other places, other rivers, other uh, uh, other locations in Canada and had really good success with it and uh, it's got this split wing look to the back it's made to sit low in the water sits on the deer hair in the front sits on the back and when fishing it the more you smash down the wings you just smash them down it seems like the better the fly fishes so I'm going to show you how to tie this one today I'm going to start uh, start off using a uh, this is a Gamagatsu uh, T10-3H. It's a very light wire, size two, very light wire Atlantic salmon hook, um, and it's it's made for dry flies. And some brown shear. This is the I use the 14 aught. You can get away with a heavier thread here, but I seem to use the 14 aught. I'm just going to start a thread wrap towards the back of the hook. So the first thing I'm going to tie in is going to be a brown dry fly hackle. And because this fly has a bit of a stone fly kind of look to it, I move down uh, uh, so that I'm right above the the barb in the hook. And I take this. Uh, this is a, just a standard. Uh, standard hackle, nothing special about it. You want it to be a little bit stiff, and I just prep it by removing the fluff down towards the quill of the feather. Then I'm going to take the barbules of the feather and I'm just going to splay them out. Just pull, pull on them, display them out. Pull back right here. And just tie in. Just tie in the tip for now. And cover that up, clean it. Keeps it out of your way. And come right back. Now, the next thing is two different items. One is this uh, STS Brown Hairline Dub Company, um, Hairline Dubbin Company, and in, uh, in this brown stone. And then I also take this Hairline product, this UV Black. And what I have found with UV dubbings and all sorts of UV materials is that if you use all of that material fish don't seem to like it a whole lot and they run away so I take I'm taking about that much of the brown and about this much of the black very maybe maybe 10 to 1 ratio and I'm gonna put it in just mix it all up you just keep pulling and pulling and then all of a sudden that black will sort of melt into the brown but then you still have that UV characteristic that um, fish can see and we can't okay so then the first thing is I'm just gonna start with some of the dubbing and I'm going to create a tapered body utilizing the dubbing. And you can just you put a little on, spin, put a little on, just keep spinning and it tightens for you. And as long as I'm building and creating a taper here. You want it to get a little thicker towards the front of the fly. 
it's going to stand on the hackle. We're going to the end result is we soak it in some uh, whatever product you like the best for dry fly. I use a loon product that I'll soak these flies in after I finish tying them. That way they float a lot better. But this particular fly actually works best on the water when it's laying down right on the wings. Alright, and I'm just going to take my my dubbing brush here and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a rough up get those fibers sticking out a bit dry fly hackle and I'm going to make very tight turns you want to choose a feather that will let you make this um, have a the ability to make tight turns all the way up all the way up this back portion this abdomen portion of the fly okay you can see the two toning of the feather with the brown and the black you've got the dubbing in the brown and the black combination peeks through every now and then Okay. All right. Now I'm going to bring my thread right to the point there, right to the point where the the hackle is is finished. And next, this is a deer body hair. It's coarse. It is nothing fancy about it. It's it's got some nice coarseness to it and I'm going to take a reasonably sized clump nice sized clump and I'm not going to put it in the stacker I'm going to look at it I'm going to make sure there's nothing really odd about lengths I'm going to brush out see you know, if I look here, see all that fuzz in there? I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to brush it on the back and that will draw anything that's up in you know, all that came out up in close that will pull all the little fibers that are there out and I want to judge my wing now this fly can have varying sizing here's two of them one with the green body and one with the brown they're both on the same identical hook okay only you can see look at the variation that I have in the the overall size of the fly right big difference in the sizing of the fly just just based upon the amount of the wing that I create so large fly small fly is all about the length of the wing so for medium size if I make the length of the wing to the very back of the hook okay I made my my distance right I switched hands I know my my spot is right at the feather so now I can judge that I'm gonna trim off this butt section I'm going to squeeze now. Okay, I'm squeezing so that what I get is this oblong, oblong shape. That I'm going to put on the hook. You see how I've moved it forward of the thread? So that what I can do is on this side here, when I'm going to put this on, I'm going to hold my finger, my thumb in the middle. Lay this on top, hold my thumb, and I've grabbed my thread, and I'm going through this 
deer hair right down into the middle one time. So I've only got half of it now, the oblong shape. Now I'm going to take the rest of it and I'm not going to pull real hard. I'm going to let the individual wraps tighten that down further and further and I'm not going to pull and flare. I don't want to flare the deer skin out, the uh, deer hair out. And I'm just going to keep moving backwards now. It's very loose on the hook. It will spin right around the hook if I were to let this go. So I don't let it go. I'm keeping my shape, that oblong shape, holding on to it. And the more I put, the more I put, the tighter that'll get. And here's why I like to use the thin thread. I don't need to torque down on this like if I was spinning deer hair. Well then I would use a 120 or 120 denier thread. In this case it's just a 70 denier. And once I've put that on over the shank a few times I can let go and what I end up with is a clump of deer hair on the top of that hook. Just give it a little brush. Take your thumb, mash it down. Flatten it. You see how it just flattened down? We can put some more wraps. The bulk right in this area is okay. Okay. Next. Next, I'm going to put on the front wing, antenna, antennae, front wing, whatever you want to call it. This is a much smaller clump of the deer hair. And again, brush it out. And we're going to do our measure. Far, grab it there, and I have to cut opposite because now I have it in my right hand. I'm going to bring my thread so that it's just over the edge of the deer hair wing in the back. I'm going to lay this one all the way to the deer hair in the back, and without putting any pressure on the thread just very very lightly on the thread I'm going to move towards the back wing because I don't want this to flare if I were to pull hard that deer hair would just flare out on me so now by doing this and doing lightly I capture all the ends once I've captured all the ends, I can let go. Okay. Hook eye right underneath. I'll show you how I'm going to clear that in just a few moments. And again, I'm not using substantial pressure. It gets tighter and tighter as you put this on, as you wrap thread. couple of wraps over the front it will help stabilize keep it from twisting a bit alright now I go back to two more two more of those dry fly hackles you want them to be pretty pretty stiff because you're going to want a little bit of stand up on this. Turn the fly upside down. And I'm going to put these in on the bottom. Right in that section that's open there. Trim.
Loctite 414. Great stuff. I'm going to put a drop on the bottom. Top. It is crazy glue, so you got to be careful. As long as you do this with crazy glue and your fingers keep them moving, they won't stick. But don't fool around with crazy glue. And we can wrap a little bit more thread right in there, right over the Loctite. Okay, back to the dubbing that we had before. Just gonna put some dubbing in here. Now, before I wrap my this center hackle, I'm going to put my fingers right here, and I'm just going to grab everything, and I'm going to push it all back just a little bit. Watch out for the Loctite. So, I've exposed the front eye just enough, so it's going to be out of the way. We can tie off. Just take your dry fly hackles, open them out, just take your scissor and run down. You'll feel it. Okay. And I'll just wrap the hackle. Tie it off right behind the front wing. Okay. Little uh, little trick for getting a thread easily onto the front. Just put that over. Bring the thread to the front, and just wrap right on the edge of the plastic tube. Uh, 
Now you can lift the whole thing up in the air to finish this off. Right now I'm wrapping on nothing but the bare hook. Drop down your wing, pull it right over the front, and give it a spread out, just like that. Next, take your back wings, evenly divide them, pull them. Pull them forward, just like this. Smash them down. Just going to take a tiny little bit of head cement, go to the underside of the fly, move that hackle out of my way, hit it with a little head cement. Remember, we used the Loctite and we secured those wings to each other front to back. They are in there holding on to one another. And uh, that's the uh, fly spoke super bug. If you have this fly, you're up Atlantic salmon, dry fly fishing, the fish take this fly with a lot of energy. For whatever reason, it reminds them of a big stone fly or something like that. Um, as you're fishing it, make sure that you're constantly bringing it in. Raise, pull out those wings to the side. Smash the wings down. Flatten them. See how I'm flattening that? Flatten them down. And um, you'll be... Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the results. There it is.